take our hymn book and turn to number 217 of the little town of Bethlehem. Number 217, let's stand and sing out unto the Lord. Olympians here in this 
auditorium, 6 o'clock, uh, choir downstairs for a half an hour run through. Our play won't take more than that. It should be a little less than that. And uh, so we'll do a solid run through today. And I uh, would like for even those who are in youth and Olympians that are in the choir to come down with us during that half an hour time. Um, and they'll be doing a lesson without you. Um, you're just going to come from one practice to the other practice and then come back up to practice again. Okay, um, so you're going to practice solid if you're in both. If you're in, uh, you know, a teacher or an older uh, person or one of the teenagers that's saying whatever. Okay, um, so keep, keep that in mind. Wednesday evening prayer meeting is at 7 p.m. Um, and then next Sunday we have the choir presentation, a Dutch traditional Christmas. Um, uh, and that's in the morning service, the Dutch traditional Christmas um, and uh, we, we'll have that next, uh, on the 13th, okay, next Sunday. And then in the evening, we'll have a dress rehearsal for the youth and Olympians. And uh, then following that, while they're having their Christmas parties, um, we will have for you a special showing of the Star of Bethlehem with uh, James. And we'll be showing that for you on um, Sunday evening, okay? And then December 20th, uh, we'll have the Christmas play in the morning, uh, the Bethlehem Project. It's very interesting. I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, and that's uh, definitely something to invite a lot of folks to. Um, but uh, I would encourage you to do that. And we'll go Christmas caroling and uh, enjoying some time after going Christmas caroling around town and over in the uh, uh, Golden Living. And we'll come back here and have some refreshments together as well. And then on December 23rd, uh, that will be a communion service, and we have the pastor's gift, as we call it, which is my family putting on for you um, uh, things that we've put together um, for you to enjoy and be encouraged. And, uh, and you know, it's kind of like our, our special Christmas gift to you, and so we encourage you to do that. And then on December 27th, um, James is going to speak for you in the morning service. And uh, we're real excited about that. And then in the evening, there'll be no evening services, okay? Um, so that's what we have planned. And uh, that's what's coming up here in the very near future. Um, next week, you, you won't want to miss the Dutch traditional Christmas. You're going to find out that they have a, a huge influence on what we do here in America from years ago uh, on what they do. And it's very interesting. Um, and so come and do that, and I think we'll also continue along with that our, our series of messages. Um, this week we're going to look at personal praise, uh, reasons for personal praise. And next week we'll look at reasons for corporate praise. And I think that the Dutch um, have done a great job of actually showing you their thoughts on the reason for corporate praise and how they did it. And I think that all is going to fit perfectly with what we're going to do. So. Um, make your plans to be here for all that next week, okay? Uh, have I forgotten any of those type of announcements? John? Andrew, I mentioned last week we'd be working on the set, and I was going to try to start on that today, but there's too much going on today. With, we have a Christmas party for Robert's family and everything. I will be working on it uh, this week. Um, I'm planning on starting on it tomorrow evening around 6 and then Tuesday as well, I believe, and we'll see how far along we get. And then uh, this coming Saturday, um, it, to finish it up, I think, is how it's going to go. So anyway, just wanted to say if anybody wants to come help, you know, just get in touch with me and uh, pop in. Okay, if anybody wants to help John put together the set, um, you know, the wood, wood, I don't know what you call them, crates, whatever we do to put them together, make them stack up and make it into Bethlehem and whatever. If you'd like to help John with that, please let him know. And uh, he'll tell you what times to come and what we're going to do. All right? Okay. So I, I think we have another announcement that we have to take care of that nobody wants to hear. <laughs> we don't want to hear any of it. Um, Don, would you please go ahead? Um, we've been working for some time on uh, somewhere around the middle of January, we'll be departing this area. We've purchased a home down in uh, central Virginia. Uh, have some labors to do on it to make it ready for us to live in. Uh, but after almost 15 years, so we're going 
going to miss uh, John and Patty. Jesse's going with them. We, we get to keep Micah. So we appreciate all the years of service. They've been on their board uh, soon up on the board here soon after. Um, uh, you know, doing their time after uh, joining the church, uh, it was not very long after that. They've been deacon and deaconess with us for all these years and have done a, a great job of ministering and taking part in uh, helping people to do things and caring about what the needs are. And uh, um, so, we'll obviously, I have to take care of some of that. Just, just an FYI, this is preparation for retirement coming in the not too distant. Preparation for retirement for Don in the not too distant future, um, moving to an easier area to deal with financially and etc. Um, so uh, let's let's remember to pray for him. Yes. I retired bill of form. He doesn't retire bill of bed. I'm a retired user bed. All right, uh, that reminds me. Uh, thank you, Johnny. Um, but we, we have out here, make sure the kids don't touch it, you know, but we have out here uh, a display of a farm. Um, this was handcrafted uh, by, by Johnny. Um, uh, and uh, uh, so I suggest you go out and spend some time just really look it over. I mean, there's a lot of intricate detail. Um, we've been debating on how to, to uh, publicize his... his uh, Thing that he's done here. I mean, this is just amazing, and it's quite beautiful. And uh, um, you know, we should be proud of, of him as a church. He showed the same detail that he put into little models, in big models, with everything he's expanded and built around here. And uh, so, um, what a blessing! What a blessing! Make sure you look that over and really enjoy it. And take a few minutes today. Don't rush off. I don't have any idea how long he'll leave it out there, but. Uh, um, by the way, that also means that at times when I have to go somewhere like Wednesday evening and I'm doing music, um, I don't leave it unlocked like I normally do. I, I unlock it, turn the heat on, go do the music lessons and come back and most of you are already in here. I'm not leaving it unlocked because I don't want any of the area children to see that cool toy in there and to let themselves in because it's open and uh, to go play with it, and then we come back and things are broken. So, um, just in case you're wondering, uh, you know, when someone gets here with a key, they'll open it up for you, but I'm, I'm not leaving it unlocked while that's in here um, without me being around and knowing that I'm watching it and keeping an eye on things. So, uh, I don't want to ruin it. Uh, but we do appreciate him doing that and also bringing it out and displaying it for us to, to look at. Um, I think it took uh, Hank some arm twisting to, to, to get Johnny to, to bring it out here for us, uh, but uh, um, he definitely ramped it up and finished it, and I think it's beautiful for Christmas. It's not only beautiful, when I look at the detail, I actually remember working in those bank barns, and I actually feel my muscles sore from all the bags and everything. <laughs> so, I, mean, I look at that detail and it, it makes me go back 30, 40 years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's quite, quite beautiful. So make sure you look at that. And we appreciate Johnny sharing that with us as well. Okay, um, then the other announcement that I need to make you aware of, um, as some of you know Jim Dodge. He's a pastor within the Fellowship of Bible Churches. And um, uh, Jim has led the music within the fellowship whenever we do anything with them. He's usually the one that's up here with us uh, leading the music. His wife has played the piano for years. And uh, yesterday, uh, last evening, uh, his wife passed away. And uh, so um, that's Gene Dodge. And uh, they worked at Wakefield for quite a while and helped to plant a church in my parents' home. Um, up in Union Mills, and uh, so they've been been in this area for quite a bit, um, but then also recently have been working in churches out towards Hagerstown, and uh, so on Tuesday evening from 6 to 8, there will be a viewing at uh, Berean State Line Fellowship, and then um, 10.30 on Wednesday morning, 
there will be uh, the, the uh, funeral, the celebration of life there um, at, at the uh, state line. Um, so be in prayer for all of that, for an opportunity uh, for people who have spent their entire life um, serving and witnessing and being a blessing to others. Um, Jim seemed to be doing okay this morning when he called me. Um, but I pray for that. And we're scheduled to talk to him again at 1.30 this afternoon and spend some time with him on the phone. Was so, this a sudden thing? I didn't know anything about it, so I would tend to lean towards yes and more sudden, but I I had not heard through the grapevine or anything that she was sick. And the last time I saw her, she seemed like she was fine. So um, I don't know. But I don't know any of the details uh, other than when things are happening. Um, but that's uh, Gene Dodge. And uh, so be in prayer for Jim and for the family, most of whom are in some type of ministry as well. Um, so we'll really that. And I believe. He's got some idea of what I'm supposed to do with with him, and so pray about that too. I have no idea what that means. I need to talk to you more later because I need your help. Um, I have no idea what that means, so we'll see. So pray for us as well, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. All right. Um, let's uh, have our gentleman come forward at this time to take up our offering. So we'd encourage you, first of all, to remember to, to pray for the Dodge family. We also would uh, remind you to continue praying for Tim. Looks like he's doing a little uh, better today. I uh, feel better now. He's got some different medicine. Um, uh, and uh, pray for his strength and for the strengthening of his bones and everything after all that he's been through. Uh, and, uh, and pray for that. Uh, don't forget to pray for Miss Marlene, um, who also we have been praying for her. Um, for her uh, sister-in-law, uh, Betty Mann, um, who was very sick and on hospice, and she passed away this week as well. Um, so remember to keep them in your prayer. Um, and don't forget to pray for Mel and Ali, uh, John Shippey's uh, family as well. Uh, keep in your prayers. Also, uh, Miss Joyce Ryan and a couple others like that uh, that have been dealing with uh, sickness. I told you uh, last week that uh, Shirley Sherman um, had a heart attack uh, Sunday two weeks ago, and she's doing better, but continue to pray for her as she heals also. Mike, would you uh, um, stand and take us before the throne uh, over the offering here? That's right. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to join together and praising you. And Lord, just uh, pray now that you would be with each one of these families. As, uh, Lost a loved one, and illness, uh, recovery, and uh, so many situations there, Lord. I just pray that you be with each one of them, provide them the strength that they need, and work pray that they uh, turn to you and ask for you, uh, ask for the strength from you, guidance and direction from you. Uh, Lord, we come now to sing your praises and Lord, give back a portion of what you have blessed us with. Back to you to spread your word. On this end, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
it's hard for a perfectionist to, to, uh, to, to have to start at the beginning. And that was beautiful, beautiful book. All right. Um, so let's sing another song, number 223. Now just leave thy throne.
At this time, we'll have John come prepare our hearts for the message. And John.
mother of Jesus, God's only son. And uh, so, we're looking at that, seeing it in, in the light of uh, it being a great model for how to praise. And last week, we worked with uh, verse 46 and 47. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. And as we look at that, we see that Mary allowed God to use her body. She praised God thus with her body. She also uh, had her soul magnifying the Lord or making Him greater, telling uh, the news of, of who He is. And her spirit uh, rejoiced in, in the Lord. Well, this week we're going to take it to the next step or the next section of her prayer. Um, this is written in Jewish poetry um, in, in the way that it's written in the style. And so in stanza number two, we now have the, the next two verses. And uh, they are going to talk about the personal praise, her personal reasons for praise. Uh, I want to ask you to think with me, though, about something. Um, some say, I have nothing to praise the Lord for. Some say that. Some have an attitude of, well, I'm thankful to the Lord. I'm thanking Him every day for the food. But in the midst of great trials or struggles or problems, they tend to struggle to see God's hand. They, they tend to struggle to see what God's doing and what, it, what He's up to. Today, I want to give you four uh, areas or reasons or parts of who you are that should make it easy for you to praise. Four. They're simple. These are not difficult, but I think if we analyze them and we start to think about what God is doing here, you and I would change our perspective and our attitude. Yes, we want to have a body, soul, and spirit that magnifies, rejoices in the Lord, and is used by God to bring Him glory, to bring Him praise. But as we look at this, starting with verse 48, we see that He says, For He hath regarded the low estate of His handmaiden. What's the first thing that she points out? She points out not so much the idea that God's working in her, but the fact that He actually has, has regarded her, paid attention to her, given her credence, and, and looked at her as something of benefit and uh, of a blessing, has, has interacted with her in the way that He thinks towards her. Now, I, I want to ask you something how many of you in this room think that, if you're honest with yourself, that God has interacted with you in your lifetime? That He has done in you some amazing things. Maybe some points of direction. Maybe some times of salvation. Maybe bringing you to the place of, of who you might marry. Maybe it, there's a, a, thousands of ways that God could regard or be involved in your life. I want to submit to you, first of all, that if we have nothing else to praise the Lord for, we have the fact that God regards us in His heart. That God pays attention to us. And He cares about the every daily need. That's why He tells us throughout Scripture that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. He tells us that because He is saying, I am regarding, I am watching, I am listening, I am paying attention to you. I don't know about you, but that should send the chills down your neck. The recognition that the Creator of the universe, God, the, the Almighty One, is giving you attention. And you say, I have nothing to praise the Lord for. There's so many things. I hurt so much. Whatever the excuse. Friend, if you want to praise the Lord with your whole body, soul, and mind, your whole body, soul, and spirit that we talked about last week, start with the idea that God even reaches into your life and has a part there. Start there. Because there is nothing greater that we can praise the Lord for than to know that God reaches in all the way down to the ultimate reach in His mercy and grace of dying on the cross for us. God regarded you when He did that. The Bible says that for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible also tells us that God is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. God is telling us very clearly 
that every single individual who walks on this earth has had the attention of God. That God regards them. He pays attention to them. He cares. If that's the case, then it's easier for us to believe when we're going through that rough time that He's at work here. He hasn't fallen asleep. He's paying attention. And He has a part. Sometimes I think this is what we do as Christians. We say, well, it was fine and dandy for Elijah to call on God and God to send down fire out of heaven. It was fine for him to do that because he's a prophet from back in the Bible day. Folks, God listens to you the same way he listens to him. He might be working in different ways. We might not build an altar today and call down fire out of heaven. But folks, he still listened to you the same way he listened to Elijah. The problem is, we're a lot like Elijah after that great victory. We, we run away in fear because of what somebody else says that doesn't want us to thrive in that situation of God working in our hearts. And what do we do? We hide in the cave and we say we can't hear God. When the truth of the matter is, God all along has been right there paying attention to him. Elijah says, it's enough. I'm all alone. I've got no one left. And what does God say? Listen up here, buddy. I've got thousands who have never even once been to me. I've been watching. Just want to tell you, I could stop the message there and tell you to go out of here and be excited at what the Lord has done because God regards you. And Mary is praying a model prayer of praise. Lord, thank you for regarding me. I dare say that if you would start saying, Lord, I know you're here. I know I don't always see you. But I know you're involved in every step of my life. Thank you. Thanks for the help here. Thanks for the knowledge there. Thanks for this. Thanks for that. I dare say that you would always be able to praise God. Because knowing that the God of the universe is paying attention should be more than enough for us to be happy with what we are and what's happening. But then add to it that he cares about every little detail and working it all out. And that he's going to make it all turn out for something better than what it is. That he'll never allow you to be tempted above what you're able. He'll never allow you to be attacked or, or dealt with. He'll never be on what he is wanting you to deal with. Why? Because he regards you. That's awesome, isn't it? I don't think there's anything that should come to that level. What an awesome God we serve. And that's the way he looks at me. Look at the second part, 48b. It says, For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. By the way, I uh, didn't really point it out to you very much, but notice in that first part there that she recognizes in comparison to God what she really is. A low estate, a handmaiden. Not much. Yet God is interacting. Sometimes I think we need to get to that place. I'm not much outside of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Verse 48b continues on. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. You know what? She thanks the Lord not only, first of all, for personal regard, but second of all, for personal blessing. For personal blessing. Now, in this particular case, she has an ultimate amazing blessing in that, that as she says, uh, down through the ages, everyone calls her blessed. Uh, unfortunately, there are some churches that have lifted her above blessed to almost godlike, uh, and that's a, that's a shame. It's a shame that she's put to that point because that's not what her desire is. She's a low estate who's recognizing God regarded her and blessed her. Listen, if you and I can get to the place to where we see God's blessing in our lives, <coughs> God's touch in us, is regarding us and then providing to us as a result of that regarding the blessing, we would learn to praise the Lord in every single way. 
Okay, so um, I, I'm, I'm going to tease and embarrass someone for a moment. They knew this was coming. Um, so I'm, I'm going to say this. Okay? <coughs> Yesterday, um, a person will be un, unnamed. Um, they, they were late. They were late coming back to the van. Okay? So they were late coming back to the van, and it wasn't their first time of being late coming back to the van for this particular activity. But as we're riding home, and we're on the Beltway, and an ambulance goes past us, and we don't know where that ambulance is going, but as we're riding home, that ambulance goes past us, and then we get into a major traffic jam, and then we're sitting uh, extra minutes in the traffic jam trying to come home. The first thought that goes through your mind is, I wonder if we would have been right next to that vehicle when it caught on fire, or right behind it, if we hadn't been late. You never know. There's a lot of different things we could say. But what I'm trying to tell you is, is sometimes I think we need to have a better perspective. When it says thank you for the blessing, I mean really, truthfully, what's the hurry? What's the, uh, did it really hurt anybody? I didn't get done something, so what? Sometimes I think that we are so stuck on the wrong thing that we can't see blessing. And maybe what we need to do is, is say, thank you, Lord, for regarding me. And in the midst of that guarding, for blessing me. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not going to teach the idea of being on time. Deal with that. But do you understand what I'm trying to say? The recognition that it's more than just the everyday things. That if we have a God who's regarding and paying attention to every little thing, then that God is giving us blessings sometimes when we think they're sour. And if we can get to the place where we're praising. Now, in this particular case, I will say that she's talking about something that's absolutely amazing. But let me remind you, it's also quite sour in some ways. You're living in a generation of people who stoned you for being pregnant out of wedlock. What do you think's coming her way? Easy. Piece of cake. No biggie. No. Pretty rough time. In fact, the man who said, I want to marry you, said, I'm not sure I can. And had to have God show up in a dream to remind him. She was heading for some rough stuff. But what's she doing? I praise you, Lord, for the blessing you brought into my life. She would be told within days of his birth, he came to die. The Bible says she had held all that in her heart and pondered on it. That she would see him suffer a great wound. I just want to tell you, blessings are always mixed with the rough stuff. And we have to realize that. We can't get to the blessing without having them tied, out tied together. I've known people who have, over the years, won great things. Um, won one lottery, for instance. And that individual, um, I think, 
would, if, if need be, give it all back if things would be different in the overall family. Some of you know what I'm talking about. I've mentioned it before and other things. I don't want to say more than that with YouTube watching. Um, but I think they would, would change it all. Recognizing how that had influences on where things ended up. With blessings, there are always trials associated. I don't know about you, but the blessing of a child brings a lot of trials. It does. And sometimes it's hard to keep that blessing in the perspective, isn't it? There's nothing more awesome than that blessing. God personally regarded you. God personally blessed you. You should be able to praise the Lord on those two things. Verse 49 comes out and says though two, two more. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things. You might say that's a repeat of the first one, regarding. But I think it's a little different. It's not just that he's paying attention, but that he's actually touched you. It's not just that he's paying attention, but now his mighty hand has touched you. Look, the God we serve is being praised here because he's a God who is being recognized as paying attention to us, being recognized as the one who gives us all blessings, all good things come from the Lord, but is also being recognized that he has reached into our lives and touched us. Again, what a true blessing it is to see God's touch. God's hand. I think this is probably the hardest one for us to see in action. Because a lot of times we live by the mantra of self-made people, pull yourself up by bootstraps, so on and so forth. So we can't always see God's touch. But in Mary's case, mighty God would touch her in such a way that he would plant within her the seed. Folks, mighty God has touched you in such a way that he planted in you the seed of Jesus Christ as well. Maybe not to have the physical birth of the child, but instead to have the birthing of the Savior in you so that you could be born again. That's the touch of God. It's not just regarding and saying, I see your problem, I'm going to help you with this. Adam and Eve, you made this mistake, I'll fix it. Regarding. But it's actually touching. No, I'm going to go beyond just seeing it. I'm going to touch your very life. And I think if you and I can start to see God's touch in our lives, God's great blessing, His regard, we will only be strengthened in our ability to praise and be encouraged to glorify and magnify our Almighty God. Why? Because He has touched us. You know that old song, He touched me, oh, He touched me, and now I am no longer the same. I don't remember the song. I don't know. But you know what I'm saying. Okay? Listen, guys, God has touched each and every one of us. Even if we're in this room, I don't think so, but even if we're in this room and we haven't accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, He still touched you. He wants to draw you to the ultimate touch of His salvation, but He still touched you. And He touches us on a regular basis. In other words, it's more than just regarding, it's actual interaction. It's actual Truly putting his hand in your life, in my life. He did that for Mary and she praised him for it. Now I think as we, as, as we evaluate our lives and we look backwards, that's when it's easier for us to say, I can see where God touched me in this area, where he did something mighty. I want to encourage you, focus on these things. See the hand of God at work in you. 
feel his touch and praise him for it. <coughs> know the, that he is truly caring. One more for you at the end of verse 49. It's the only one that doesn't start for he had in some fashion or another. Okay? Um, but it says, and holy is his name. Now, I thought at first to just leave it off. We got three. For personal regard, for personal blessing, and for personal touch because four was before all three of them. Right? But I got to thinking, isn't that still a part of it? She doesn't come back and say four, holy is his name. She just outright says, holy is his name. And I think the fourth one is for personal revelation. The Bible says that no man can come to God unless he guide them. Folks, the very fact that you're here, saved or unsaved, the very fact that you're here means God has been opening your eyes to truth. He has been giving to you personal revelation. Sometimes we could do a better job of studying the Word of God. Sometimes we could do a better job of praying over the Word of God. Sometimes we could do a better job of allowing His revelation to touch us, to show us His regard, and to give us blessings. Sometimes we could do a lot better job of that. But the honest truth is, He has opened our eyes to truth and provided us revelation. And so just like Mary, who's in the midst of this prayer of praise, can come out of the end of, I am truly blessed. Because God has regarded me, He has blessed me, and He has touched me. And she can also say, holy is His name. In other words, He's given me understanding of who He is. He's given me understanding of who He is. I'm going to tell you something. You're heading into the rough time that Mary's about to go through. And her thought is, God is holy in doing all of this. It says that she has a great understanding of who God is and what He's up to. She considers it a real blessing to go through the trial that's about to come. She considers it a joy because she sees the final picture. It's never easy going up the road. Getting in a car, going somewhere, right? So, I don't remember whether it was last year or the year before. We uh, headed out on Christmas Eve to head up to um, uh, New York, and it started snowing, and New York wasn't expecting snow, and the, the roads were <coughs> solid ice. Um, came up on probably 45, 50 car pile up. Uh, where a truck driver had made it off into the ditch in order to get out of the way of hitting somebody, big tanker, and was sprinting up the hill because it was over a dip and down in the hole, sprinting up the hill trying to stop people before they got there. Of course, I have the things everybody makes fun of, the stuff the snow tires, so I can stop. And, and I was telling the kids to brace because we're going to get plowed. So people couldn't stop on the stuff, but they ended up, nobody hitting us. It was a bad bad accident. Lots of vehicles involved. Um, weave our way through that and eventually get up uh, out of there and all over the place, solid ice everywhere. That's a long trip. What makes it worthwhile? You know what's on the other end, doesn't it? I mean, if we didn't know what was on the other end, what would the attitude be? Let's pull over and go stay in a hotel till this goes away. Let's go home, right? But no one what's on the other end says, no, nah, I'm all right. I don't mind driving any stuff. Where are you? Knowing the end result is what gets us through some of the rough things. Do you think when Mary's about to have this baby and all these things are coming her way that her ability to see the revelation of God of what is coming, she doesn't understand it all yet, she's got a lot to ponder, but to see the picture of God of what this really is, do you think it makes it all easier? You better believe it. And so the end result, you're able to praise God because in having things revealed to you, 
you have greater faith of knowing what the future is. Mary didn't know yet that he was going to die. She just knew he was her savior. She would be told pretty soon he was going to die. Like I said, just a few days away. Yet here she is after being told that you're going to have God touch you in this way. And being touched and then going and visiting somebody else. And she saying, praise the Lord. Why? Because I've personally been regarded by God. So have you. I've personally been blessed by God. So have you. I've personally been touched by God. So have you. And I've personally had God guide me into understanding who He is and what He's really doing. Friend, I hope that that says to you I have much to praise the Lord for. And so in the midst of all these days when our world evermore is trying to remove pictures of Christ, I pray that we will be a greater picture of Christ, glorifying and magnifying His name. When newspapers try to tell us that God isn't, isn't a part of what's happening, you and I, with our faith and our difference maker, but God has touched me. God is regarding this situation God has blessed me. And God has revealed these truths. We can make a difference for the kingdom of Christ. Even in these trying times. Every head bowed, every eye closed, and we're looking around. Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor Andrew, I, I know I do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. If I die today, I'm not sure I'd end up going to heaven. I encourage you. I encourage you to ask Jesus Christ in your heart right now, today. If you're here today and you, you say, Pastor, I, I don't know Jesus as my Savior, I'd like to take care of that. Will you raise your hand right where you are? Christian, as we spend this time together for just a moment, we're not going to take a long time. Maybe you've allowed yourself to get down in the doldrums and to be able to complain about a lot of different things here. Right now. Maybe in some ways you feel overworked or overwhelmed. Maybe you feel like the world is, is going down the tubes. Why don't you get back the right perspective and right focus and see what God's doing in your life. Father, I come before your throne and I thank you, Lord, for the special time that we're having in the Word today. I pray, Lord, that you would touch each heart with our need to be uh, happier, more rejoicing, uh, rejoicing to overflowing exceedingly uh, with the idea of, of who you are and what you're doing in us. Lord, I pray that we would keep the proper perspective. And Lord, I thank you for your blessings, for your love, for your joy. Uh, Lord, I, I thank you that you care about us and are paying attention to everything. I thank you that all blessings come from you. I thank you that you've touched my life in so many ways and you're touching these folks here today. Lord, I pray that you would help us as we understand and see your purpose and plan, that it makes the things that we go through and what's happening in our world seem so much easier because our yoke is easy and our burden is light when we finally get to the place of seeing what the end result is. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing together. 89. Lord, speaking to you, if you'd like to come, please do so. Stand together as we sing. All the way from the Savior the
young people, youth, actors, uh, Olympians, 5 o'clock tonight, choir downstairs at 6, and uh, then Bible study at 6.30, and uh, Hank will be close to the work there. May I do something different? Sure. John, did you read the chorus that you sang? Those words I thought were very appropriate to what I said. I got it. No, that's just saying. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> Good. Uh, How many kings step down from their thrones? How many lords have abandoned their homes? How many greats have become the least for me? How many gods have poured out their hearts to romance a world that is torn all apart? How many fathers gave up their sons for me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the ways that you have watched, regarded, and revealed to us who you are. We pray, Lord, that we will walk in that with confidence and joy this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.